Well, I think I made it back, but I'm in the future and it looks like, yeah, I think I'm okay. Although I haven't seen the space time machine or Larry for some time. So I'm a little worried, but maybe we'll find them by the end of the day today, at least. Well, here we are. We're at a mural at the Mexican American Cultural Center. This was made by our teen program, The Caminos, and they wanted to make a mural about how they've been inspired by the Mac and their favorite memories of the Mac. So you can see artists here. You can see a calavera from our Day of the Dead celebration and a girl running with a kite. So this was really inspirational for me in thinking about the future and what I want it to be. And hopefully it will be for you too as you make your final page. We're going to make a hot air balloon pop-up that's going to carry all our dreams and inspirations for our community and for ourselves up into the world. And so first we're going to learn about another artist and how he inspired he aspired to be a space age sound musician and his name is Esquivel. And oh, oh, who is that? Oh, oh, it's Larry. Yeah, poor Larry. I don't think he, he likes space time traveling very much, but hopefully we can find a way to, to get him to travel better. So I'll see you soon. Hi everyone. Welcome to Miss Casita's story time. Today, Larry and I will be reading Esquivel, Space Age Sound Artists by Duncan Tonatia and Susan Wood. Ay! When Juan Garcia Esquivel was a small boy, he lived with his family in Tampico, Mexico, where whirling marching bands let out joyful yells as they stamped and strummed. By age six, Juan was curious about music. There was a piano at Juan's house, but it was also a player piano. A paper roll told it which keys to play. Clever Juan had an idea. He disabled the paper roll and turned his parents jangling piano into one he could practice on. He played it day and night. By age 10, Juan was captivated by music. He loved to play piano anytime, anywhere. Sometimes he'd disappear from home in search of an audience and his family would have to go looking for him. They always found him in front of a piano. When Juan's family moved to Mexico City, the country's bustling capital, Juan found work playing piano at Mexico's first 24-hour radio station. He performed for 15 minutes each day and was paid two pesos a show, enough to buy a sandwich and a taxi ride home. He was just 14 years old. Juan started learning all he could on his own. No music teachers, lessons, or schools. Without traditional training in how musical notes went together, Juan focused instead on how sounds could be arranged. Finally, Juan felt ready to create his own music. So when at the age of 17, he was offered a job of orchestra leader for a popular comedy show at the radio station, Juan gladly took it. When the radio comedian needed music for a skit about, say, a stout man walking his tiny poodle down a busy street, Juan had to imagine what that sound might sound like. Juan might ask the kettle drums to wham, 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 like a lumbering giant. He might ask the clarinets to and oboes to yip, yap, like a dainty dog. He might tell the trumpets and trombones to honk, blap, deep, like blaring car horns. Juan tested and mixed and blended and arranged all sorts of sounds to match the imaginary situation. He was an artist using dips and dabs of color to create a vivid landscape. But instead of paint, Juan used sound. Weird and wild sounds, strange and exciting sounds. Juan started experimenting with popular Mexican tunes. He tinkered with tempos, slowing down, then revving them up. He fiddled with dynamics, swapping soothing sounds and startling loud sounds. He twisted chords and combined instruments to sound thrilling, dreamy, and often funny. Because Juan liked music, that made people laugh. But underneath the humor, it took great musical skill to play Juan's challenging new music. 
Nobody had ever heard of music like Juan's. Soon he was winning awards. His sounds were turned into records that people could buy in stores. Juan's innovative music could be heard on radios and record players all across Mexico. An important record company in the United States heard about Juan and his unusual music. Would he come to make records in America? Yes, yes, yes. C, C, C. Vroom. Juan packed two suits. He bought a big red convertible car with a white top. And then he drove all the way to New York City. Vroom, vroom. There, Juan found a music shop the size of a department store with three entire floor floors filled with strange and exotic instruments. Boom, ba, doom, ba, boom. Boozimba. He saw boom bams, bamboo tubes that could play a tune, a spooky sounding electrical instrument called a theremin, a bazimba, a kazoo sounding contraption played with a mallet, the ondio line, an organ with a swaying keyboard, and even a giant gong. So many new, odd and new sounds to play with. Juan was in heaven. The late 1950s and early 1960s was a great time to be recording music. Scientists had discovered new processes called stereophonics, or stereo for short. It separated sounds, so when you listen to a recording, music could see, seem to come from the left side, the right side, or both sides at once. For sound artist Juan, stereo was yet another exciting color for his musical palette. To make a good stereo recording, instruments needed to be kept apart while they were recorded. That way the brap of the horns wouldn't get mixed in with the weedy wee of the flutes. Most conductors used curtains, screens, or special booths to separate the instruments. That wasn't enough for one. Once he put half his orchestra in the record one word recording studio and the other half in another recording studio on the other side of the building. So far it felt like they they were an entire city block away. The musicians were, wore earphones so they could hear what they were playing, and so that everyone could see him, Juan conducted on a closed-circuit TV television only the musicians could view. Juan had one more sonic trick up his sleeve. He brought in singers. But the singers didn't sing words, they sing sounds. They'd sing zoo, 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 and doo, and pow. Ba, 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 roo, roo. On Juan's quirky on Juan's quirky visions of popular songs, he'd replace the lyrics everyone knew with the singer's fun, flashy sounds. Lu, 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 ra, ra, ri. People loved Juan's colorful music. It took them to other worlds, other planets. It sounded like a crazy rocket ride zigzagging through outer space. When Juan wasn't making his unique music, he enjoyed many things. He liked beautiful art, fancy cars, and elegant clothes. He especially liked pretty women, but Juan loved music most. Juan made many records and played hundreds of concerts with his orchestra. In Las Vegas, Juan and his musicians performed at the Stardust Hotel for 14 years in a row. Bands from near and far, including famous singers, actors, and actresses, will come to hear his out-of-the-world sounds. Juan also made music for dozens of movies and television programs, even a TV show especially for children. Now Juan wasn't called Juan anymore. He'd explored sonic frontiers, expanded musical possibilities, and enhanced the way people think about, listen to, and enjoy music. Now Juan was a space age sound artist, simply known simply as Esquivel, with an exclamation point. The end. I hope you like that book. Now you guys are going to be making your own future page in your libros del tiempo. You're going to be making one where you're imagining the future, much like Esquivel imagined his own future. This is not just your future, but also the future of the community. So let's head back to the studio and get started. Okay, everyone, welcome back to Casita's Art Studio. And today we're going to be working on your last page in your Libros del Tiempo. 
And in this page, you're gonna be working on creating a hot air balloon that's gonna lift up all the aspirations and dreams we have for our community and also for ourselves. And so to get started, you're gonna need another piece of white cardstock paper or a color of your choice. And you're gonna fold it so the edges match. We're gonna crease it like so. And then you're gonna come in and you're going to draw those two lines that we did, if you remember back on our family tree day. And you're gonna make them about a finger width apart. So you can see there how long, about how long you want it. For your, if you have little fingers, you might wanna do two fingers width apart. But you can see how much it takes it up on the paper here. And then we're just gonna cut in those lines, cut and cut and you want to make sure they're about the same length and then we're going to fold it over like so okay and you're going to fold it again backwards like that okay and then you're going to open it up and you're going to pop in the opposite way that fold that you made so that when you close it the fold is inside of the paper see and then you come in and you have this. This is gonna be the basket for our hot air balloon. And I'm gonna decorate my hot air balloon basket with this nice red. I'm gonna put some blue on here. Okay, now we're gonna make our hot air balloon. Then we're gonna get some construction paper and we're simply gonna fold it like so. And for this first one, you may want to draw with your pencil a heart shape. If you can cut it out on your own, that's fine, but I like to just make a sample here. And then you're gonna cut this out and you're gonna cut out a heart shape. And that heart shape is gonna be the template for all of our other pieces of the hot air balloon. Okay, now, you can see here that I have several hearts cut out. I have two of pink, red, and or, or pink, orange, and yellow. And what I'm gonna do is show you how I cut out the rest of these. I wanted them all to be the same size, so I took the original one that I cut out and I folded over the paper and creased it like before. And then I just set him on there and traced him. And then I cut out the heart. Okay, everyone, once you have all of your hearts cut out, we're gonna take them and we're gonna start gluing them together. So you wanna find the right hand side of your first heart and you just wanna fold it over so you have half a heart. And then you're gonna glue that side and you're gonna attach half the heart of the next heart, the, the left hand side, to that side. Okay, and then what you're gonna have is a little fan that opens up where they're all attached. So you would attach the next one here and so forth. And so I have one here that I finished. And what I did was just attach each edge to the next edge. And sometimes they will stick together a little bit, but you can just peel them apart. And there you have it. It's like a little heart book, okay? So now we're gonna come back to our cardstock page and our basket, which we have popped inside. And we're just gonna glue this heart down to the page, okay? So to do that, you wanna fold it closed, like so, so that the crease of the hearts is on the crease of the cards, they're lined up. And then we're gonna place some glue in here. And we're gonna seal that down. And then we're gonna place some glue on the other side. And then we're gonna attach that. So then when you have, you may have to peel them apart a little bit, you have a balloon. And then the next thing you're gonna wanna do, I want you to think about your dreams and aspirations that you have for yourself and for your community. And we're gonna take a look at the ones that I made here. And here I said, because I've been in school for a long time to become an anthropologist, that's someone who studies people. I put anthropologist there because that's what I wanna do in the future, but first I need to finish school. School, So that's one of my immediate dreams to finish school. 
I also thought that I, I want to have a healthy community, which is a big subject right now that we want everybody to be healthy and safe. So I drew a person up here smiling who's healthy. I also like a lot of green space. As you know, when we did our maps, I said that I love going to Barton Springs, so I made some trees here. So you can write in or draw anything you like that is a dream for yourself or for your community. And this hot air balloon is just gonna lift it up and take our aspirations into the future because that's what we're doing. We're imagining the future. So I also put some cotton balls down here. You should have some in your pack and I just glued them on so it looks like we're raising up through the clouds. This is the last page in our Libros del Tiempo. So put a lot of thought into it. And when you're done, just like we did the hearts, you could glue each page of the Libro del Tiempo together and make a full book. So thank you. I've had a great time making with you this week and I look forward to seeing you around in space and in time.